Now, the Deep State, they are using all their ammunition right now. They are unleashing everything they possibly have. And we know that they're trying to push their agenda any way they possibly can. And we're going to be discussing what's been going on with Clinton, going on with Debbie Wasserman Schultz, going on with Brennan, with the rest of the individuals that are under investigation, and all about the bombs that were sent to these people. But let's first start off with Ron Rosenstein. And we know that he was scheduled to have a closed-door meeting with certain individuals. Bob Goodlock, Jerry Nadler, Trey Gowdy, and Elijah Cummings. It looks like that this meeting right now is canceled. They're not going to meet. There's going to be no closed-door meeting or anything like that. And basically what they said was, the committees are unable to ask all questions of Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein within the time allotted for tomorrow's transcribed interview. Therefore, the interview will be postponed. Mr. Rosenstein has indicating his willingness to testify before the Judiciary and Oversight Committees in the coming weeks in either a transcribed interview or a public setting. We appreciate his willingness to appear and will announce further details once it has been rescheduled. Now, once again, if it is in a public setting, they won't be able to ask him certain questions. And at this point, is an interview really necessary? Because if Trump and the Department of Justice declassifies the information Q has told us in many, many different posts before, it would be bye-bye Rod Rosenstein. Bye-bye to a lot of people. So instead of going through all of this, which is kind of meaningless at this point, declass the information. Now, I know they're waiting for a very specific time. They're waiting for the deep state to use their ammunition. And you can see right now, they are using their ammunition. Right now, we know that the caravan is heading up to the United States. There's also a second caravan of migrants heading towards the U.S. Now, this group started out with about a thousand now that has grown to 2500 so we have two groups now moving towards the united states and this is all being done on purpose now judicial watch they looked at what was going on down in guatemala and they're saying that the guatemalan president announced on october 11th that they arrested and de deported about 100 people who were linked to terrorist groups specifically the islamic state and this comes as the caravan of Honduran migrants moves through the country on their way to the U.S. So there are terrorists within this group. Now, the Guatemalan president announced this, that they did capture these terrorists. And we need to go back in time because when Obama set forth his memorandum or his executive order, he allowed all these individuals to come up here. They placed advertisements billboards and things and said send your people up and these people you know received money to come up to this area and when they came up to the borders it was free for everyone to, to jump over the border hop on a bus and then be brought to a sanctuary city and they came in droves from honduras el salvador guatemala through the mexican border and for years the united states the people of the united states rolled out the welcome mat offering housing, food, medical treatment, and free education without any vetting, knowing who these individuals are, or anything like that. And within these groups, there were gang members, there were criminals, there were many other people. And we need to remember that Guatemala has long been known as a major smuggling corridor for foreigners from African and Asian countries making their way into the U.S. There were numerous reports. There was one in, out of the Prensa Libra where they did an in-depth piece on the inner workings of international human smuggling network that moves migrants from Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh to the U.S. Individuals are sent to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, then flown to Brazil before heading to Colombia. Once in South America, the migrants are transported to Panama before moving into Costa Rica, then Central Point of Guatemala, then up to the United States. 
So we see that there's been a long history of human trafficking. And we can see just from what has been happening in the past, a lot of these children that come up and a lot of the parents that come up, they're not really their parents. And a lot of the children that come up, they're alone. And we can see that this has been the agenda for a very long time. I mean, really think about this. If this was 10,000 Russians, do you think they would call this a caravan? Or do you think they would call it an invasion? Because it's really an invasion and what they're doing here. Now, Trump tweeted out today that he completely agrees with Obama 100% on immigration. And everyone's probably thinking like, well, what do you mean he agrees to this? Well, he's agreeing to what Obama said back in 2005. And what he said back then is something completely different than what he said later on. Listen to what Obama said back in 2005 generous and welcoming people here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law, uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. So as you can see, Obama pretty much says everything that Trump has been saying. But of course, what has happened here is that everything has changed as time went on and there was a different agenda. But back then, and actually, if you listen to Clinton also, they said the same exact thing. And of course, today, there's a completely different agenda. We see Judicial Watch right now and the Daily Caller News Foundation announced that their Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Justice for memoranda written by fired FBI Director James Comey about conversations with Obama, Biden, Hillary Clinton, Senator Chuck Schumer, Representative Nancy Pelosi, and Senator John McCain. Now, they are asking for this information. They're also asking for records of communication between former Secretary of State John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland, and the Trump dossier author Christopher Steele and his associates. So they're putting this request in and they want all this information from these individuals. And we'll have to see what the Department of Justice says. And of course, they're going to be redacted. But you can see that Judicial Watch is building a case against these individuals. So what do we have here? We have Judicial Watch. They're building a case, trying to get the information. We also have the Department of Justice, Huber Horowitz. We have the declassification all happening at the same time. Let's move on to Khashoggi. Now, Trump was out there and he was saying that the Turkish President Erdogan was pretty rough on Saudi Arabia. Trump told reporters he wanted to get all the facts on Khashoggi's death at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul before agreeing with Erdogan's assessment. He says U.S. investigators, most of whom should be back in the United States by October 24th, once we get this information from these investigators, then we will make our decision. And I do believe, since we mentioned this before, there were other intelligence operatives on the ground while this was happening, and I believe they were monitoring the situation. And this is why Trump hasn't come out and said, yes, it was definitely these individuals, because I do believe he might have different intelligence than what is being reported on the mainstream media, and most likely they're putting this together. Remember when he was debunking the Russian collusion. The mainstream media, they were all out there in force, pushing their agenda. And he put out the idea that Obama, Brennan, and the rest were spying on him. Now, of course, in the beginning, no one believed this at all. And with this case, he put out the idea that it could have been rogue killers. And he's continually saying that he doesn't believe the story of Saudi Arabia, that he needs more facts. We never heard the recordings. We really don't have the information. 
And I think he's letting the mainstream media once again use their ammunition and it looks like they're preparing for a countermeasure against what is going on here. And remember, he did say those people who are responsible are going to pay. He never specifically said Saudi Arabia are the ones that are responsible and they're going to pay. And maybe they are responsible. But at this point, we're not really seeing the evidence that they are the ones who have been doing this. Now, very interestingly today, we see that many individuals within this deep state realm have been receiving packages. Now, first of all, we had Soros. Soros received a bomb in the mailbox. One of his employees, guards, whatever it was, decided to take that bomb and bring it out to the woods, then call the FBI where they detonated it. Now, this is kind of strange. Why would this individual pick up a bomb? Secondly, we now have Clinton, who lives in Chappaqua, New York, which is in Westchester. A package was mailed to her. Obama, there was a package mailed to him. There was another story that Hillary Clinton actually received a package very close and nearby to her home. Now, if you look at Hillary's home, it's all fenced in. They have cameras all over the place. And why would someone actually bring a bomb or something there? Because they have a guard area in the, in the, in the front of the house and they have cameras all the way around and Secret Service and everything else that is most likely or other guards guarding this area. So this is kind of strange and kind of odd right off the bat. We also get word that Brennan, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and many others are receiving the same exact thing. Even the news agencies, they are receiving packages. Time Warner, CNN, and the rest. So when we start to look at this, even Holder, I believe, received a package. It's kind of odd that all these individuals that are receiving the package, they're the ones who are being investigated. And most likely, this is part of the agenda. When I say the deep state is going all out and they're unleashing everything right now, that's what they're doing. What's coming up? The elections. And they know they need to regain their power. Because right now they're powerless. And they know they need to do something. So if you send these things, these packages, to each and every one of these individuals, it puts out sympathy. Oh my God, vote for us because look, they're trying to destroy us. They're trying to go for the sympathy vote. Now, CNN originally said that there was a pipe bomb sent to the White House. And because this was going all part of their agenda and everything. And then they had to retract the story because it was fake because the Secret Service came out and said, yeah, we never received anything like that. So this is a fake story. But CNN did receive a bomb. And Jake Tapper tweeted it out and showed a picture. And then people started to zoom in on the picture and noticed that there was an Islamic State flag on the bomb, which is kind of strange in itself, because as we know, Brennan, Obama, Clinton, and the rest, this is the deep state army. So they had their operatives send these bombs out to themselves. Why would they do that? It makes no sense. Most likely, this is a false flag. Now, the White House is out there, and they're condemning the sus suspected bomb you know, placements at the homes of Obama, Clinton, and the rest, and they're saying that we condemn you know, all of this. Mike Pence is out there, which is the vice president, says, we condemn the attempted attacks against former President Obama, the Clintons, CNN, and others. These cowardly actions are despicable and have no place in this country. Grateful for swift response from the Secret Service, FBI, and local law enforcement, those responsible will be brought to justice. Now, what's very interesting is that we have Alexander Soros. This is the son of George Soros. They already started their campaign, and you can see where they're going with all this. They started to blame Trump for this. Now, Alexander Soros said it's because of Trump's politics of demonizing opponents. So what they're trying to say right now is that the individuals who sent these bombs to these people are Trump supporters, which will then lead into Q supporters. 
Q has warned us about this. MSNBC is also saying the same thing. They brought on a Hillary aide to blame Trump for the mail bombs. So you can see what they're doing right now. What's their agenda? Their agenda is to get the sympathy vote. Their agenda is to blame this on Trump. It's the followers. Now, they can be using innocence to, you know, show that these are the people that sent it out. And then we'll come to find out that these were not Trump supporters, had nothing to do with Trump. Or they had their paid mercenary forces, which was an inside job. Maybe the intelligence community put this together, put the Islamic State flag on there and send these out and make it look like they're being targeted. But what's very interesting, and I said this before, these are the same people that are being investigated for treason, corruption, crime against the people of the U.S. So when we think about what is going on here, they're trying to push their agenda with Khashoggi. They're trying to push their agenda with the caravan that's coming up from Central America. Now we have a bomb scare where these same people that are under investigation, that have created the caravan, that created the Khashoggi incident, they're the ones who are being targeted. I mean, think about what's going on here. But Trump kind of countered everything they're trying to do. He didn't come out and say it was a false flag. He didn't say that each one of these people, you know, mailed the bombs to themselves because people would think he's crazy and the mainstream media would put that all out there. He did something completely different. What did he do? He said the administration is going to get to the bottom of a series of suspicious packages sent to several prominent Democrats. I just want to tell you that in these times, we have to unify. We have to come together and send one very clear, strong, unmistakable message that acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. He went on to say, we are extremely angry, upset, unhappy about what we witnessed this morning, and we will get to the bottom of it. And he added this. He said, the makeshift pipe bombs bearing the Islamic State logos, egregious and abhorrent to everything we hold dear and sacred as Americans. So he's telling the country to come together, to unify over terrorism. And he didn't go after the Democratic Party. He didn't go after the deep state. He didn't point fingers. He didn't say a false flag. He's telling the people of the United States, come together, unify. He just countered everything they were trying to do. Let's make America great. Once again, let's stand up to these people. These people push their false flags. These people push violence. These people don't like to lose control. And they're doing all of this because they know and they understand that when the declassification comes out, and they don't know when it's going to come out, this is why they're throwing up everything they possibly can and unleashing everything right now because they know that it's going to come out. It'd be very funny if Trump does absolutely nothing until right after the elections and then all of a sudden the D-class comes out. So they would have spent all their ammunition during the run-up to the elections and nothing happened. And they would be caught off guard after the elections and then all of a sudden the D-class hits. And then America is woken up to what is really going on. And you can see this might be part of the agenda. Remember, timing is everything. Maybe he'll wait for the last moment leading up to the election. We don't know. But we know it is timed perfectly to get the deep state, to make sure that they're off balance, off guard, that people don't know when it's going to come and when it's going to hit. That's the whole point of this. And they want these people, and Q always says, 
these people are stupid. They want them to do all of these things. They want them to push this agenda. I mean, think about what Trump is doing with the illegals coming up. He's showing what Obama has said back in 2005. We need the rule of law. We just can't let people hop over the borders. This is not what America is about. He's using all of this against them. And this is being done on purpose.